Good morning. Welcome to Seattle Community Church. As we get started with worship, I just want to share a couple of announcements with you. The first one is that Vacation Bible School is still going on in the month of August. So if you would like to have your child participate, please go to our website and register there. Or you can contact Esther at children's at seattlechurch.org and she'll get all the information to you that you need. The second thing is that our outreach and missions ministry is having a meeting on August 30th at 1245. And all of you are invited to come see how we are engaging with our community and with our world. So if you'd like to attend that meeting via uh, Google Meets, please contact j at jb at seattlechurch.org. Once again, that's J-A-Y-B at seattlechurch.org. And we are also going to be having a membership class on September 13th and 20th. Both of them are the same thing, so you can choose which one you want to attend. If you'd like to learn what it means to be a member of the church, or if you just want to learn more about our ministry here, please come and join us in that class. And once again, you can go to our website to get more information, or you can contact Bo at ministry at seattlechurch.org. And finally, we are still going to be having a fall cleaning party. So if you would like to come and clean a part of the church, we want to encourage you to go to our website and you can sign up for which day, which room, and what time you want to clean. And that's going to be happening in the week of September 20th through the 26th. So please check that out. Right now, let's join Tony as he leads us in some praise songs. Hi, my name is Tony, and I'm one of the worship leaders here at Seattle Community Church. I'm glad you're here with us to worship the Lord and to prepare our hearts for his message. Sing the song with me. In the morning, I rise. In the morning, I rise. In the morning, I rise. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me 
Take this time to greet one another in the name of Jesus, the passing of the peace. Peace be with you. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for everyone who is watching this service. While we can't gather in person, I thank you for giving us a medium to commune. I pray that Pastor Brenna will bless us with her message, allowing us to heal you and become closer to you, Lord. Please allow everyone to learn about your word and spread it to one another during these difficult times. I hope this will allow the many people who are going through hardships to know that you are with them. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. It is the last day of our seven-week series where we have been exploring the Psalms. You know, we've spent these last weeks looking at the way in which the Psalms teach us about God and about ourselves and about our community, and they teach us how to speak with God and pray to God and cry to God when we don't have the words. And as we wrap up this series today, I hope that this is only the beginning of your journey, that you take time throughout the next months and the rest of your life to explore the ways that the Psalms help you to connect to God and yourself. They speak of things that are so much bigger than just us. In fact, they often remind me of stories about the history and the people of Israel and they remind me of stories of my family and of our world and the truth and the pain and the beauty that we've seen. In fact, a particular story that they remind me of is told to me by my mom. And it took place mid-morning on May 18th, 1980. My mom was 21 years old and her and her friend were at Green Lake sunbathing. And all of a sudden they noticed that the sky was beginning to get darker and ash began to fall from it. Over 200 miles away, Mount St. Helens had shocked the world when its northern face slid off, triggering a giant eruption. 24 square miles of land buried, as much as 600 feet of debris on top of it. The eruption took place over nine hours and blew 520 million tons of ash over 230 square miles. It knocked down 14 billion feet of timber. 57 people died. 7,000 animals, 12 million fish. And a crater two miles wide and a half mile deep was formed as the molten lava poured out, reducing what was once a fertile forest into a moon-like landscape of pumice and ash. It was the equivalent to 1,600 times the size of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And by the time it was all over, scientists would gather and declare that the new landscape of Mount St. Helens would likely never recover. And if it did, it would take more than our lifetime to ever see any new growth through the ash and the death. So you can imagine the surprise of the scientists when less than two years later, they began to spot lupine growing up through the cracks. And within 10 years, ground foliage and wildflowers and small animals had begun to return. 
Within 20 years, trees had grown and large animals like elk were repopulating and making their home on that very mountain. And what had been written off as a lost cause, what had been written off as dead, was now full of new life. This is the mountain that I and you grew up with. And when you drive by it or go visit, it is an ever-present reminder of loss and survival and revival. You know, this is the story of our God as well. A God who looks out over brokenness and destruction and death and says, this is not the last word. Look, I am doing a new thing. You know, as we've been exploring as a community these psalms, the songbook of God's people, we have learned that they are often understood to be this historical proof that humans like you and I have been crying out to God in our pain and our joy for far longer than anyone can ever recall. You know, individual and communal psalms of lament, they criticize God. They demand answers and satisfaction. Why have you forsaken us, O God? When, O Lord, will you bring our help? And the psalms of joy, they praise God for his goodness and they invite us to sing in the temple courts. And yet there are those that also speak of the unspeakable that invite honesty from us, that move us to demand justice and action from a God who might seem to not care. These very psalms, they give us the language that we need to speak to God because they force us to face some very real truths that we would rather not encounter. Because in the Psalms, just as in the visual of Mount St. Helens, we find a reminder of our own mortality. We find wrapped up in the whole Psalter the themes of life and death and what it means to live and to die. And for so many of us right now at this moment, I think that our lives are fraught with that same fear of life and death. What does it mean to live in the midst of COVID-19 and a global pandemic? What does it mean to die? And beyond the literal definitions and existential questions and fear that that evokes in us, we find ourselves with a million little questions every day. A million little situations of life and death, the death of dreams and plans, life born out of the unexpected. And communities gather around and they ask themselves questions about life and death. Is it life to stay in our homes isolated but safe and breathing or is that its own kind of death? Or is it death to sacrifice our own comforts and needs and wants for another or is that in fact life? You know, during the eruption of Mount St. Helens, 1,300 feet of elevation were lost. The entire North Face was changed in the eruption. An ecosystem was wiped out and no amount of hoping or wishing or working would ever allow it to go back to the normal that it was for all those years. Instead, the mountain itself has found and created a new normal. And in the wake of the volcanic explosion, when thousands of years of old growth forests were wiped out, new life still found a way to flourish. Animals that had been dying out in other areas because of too much tree cover began finding a new home, a new lease on life on that north side of the mountain. And now 37 plus years later, a new normal, In fact, the only normal I have ever known and that your kids have probably ever known has taken hold. 
And yet when my mom looks at the mountain, or my dad, or many of you, you can also see what has been lost, as well as what has been gained. You know, the term a new normal has been thrown around a lot in the last few months, but it is not a new term. It's the same term we used a decade ago when I was working for the Red Cross and in disaster relief to help people who had lost everything. It was the term that we used when we were talking to people to help them face the truth that there are some things that are so impactful, some things that are so big, that what was can never go back to the way it had been. That a new fork is struck in a road or in a life and that we are on it whether we want to be or not. And it doesn't mean that the future is bad or worse. It just means that things are different now. And we have to learn to live into that different. Whether it was the Israelite people watching the city of Jerusalem burn to the ground before being taken away to Babylon, or the disciples gathered together that morning, hiding after the crucifixion. The people of God, you and I, have and always are living into a new normal. We are a people who are defined by the resurrection of a life literally raised up from the dead and ashes And today is no different. It is in this liminal space that the Psalms can help guide us through questions of life and death that keep us awake at night. For me, Psalm 116 has been such a lifeline during these very long days and months. And I'd like to share it with you. So, Hear the word of God. I love the Lord because he hears my request for mercy. I will call out to him as long as I live because he listens closely to me. Death ropes bound me. The distress of the grave found me. I came face to face with trouble and grief. So I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, please save me. The Lord is merciful and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects the simple folk. And he saves me wherever I am. I tell myself, you can be at peace again because the Lord has been good to you. You, God, have delivered me from death my eyes from tears and my foot from stumbling. So I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I have remained faithful. Even when I said I am suffering so badly. Even when I said out of fear that everyone around me is a liar. What can I give back to the Lord? for all the good things that he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The death of the Lord's faithful is a costly loss in his eyes. Oh yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant. I am your servant and the son of your servant. You freed me from my chains. So I will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you 
and I'll call on the Lord's name. And I will keep the promises that I made to the Lord in the presence of all of God's people, in the courtyard of the Lord's house, which is in the center, the heart of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I love Psalm 116. The opening verse is, I love the Lord because he hears my requests for mercy. They remind me, they remind us that God is near to us. That God hears us. Having faced, faced death, and distress and pain, the psalmist declares that it is God who has saved them and God who brings them back into the land of the living. And when I find myself overwhelmed, when I find myself fearing for my life, I have always loved the line. I, I keep it written down everywhere. <sighs> you can be at peace again because the Lord has been good to you. You, God, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. More than just recognizing the value and importance of life, which is everything in many ways, the psalm faces the truth also and declares the truth about death because it is ever present and it is an inescapable part of the human condition. But the psalmist says this, that the death of those faithful to the Lord is not swept under the rug. It is a costly and a terrible loss in God's eyes. And when terrible things happen and when people die from disease or explosions or old age, we can find ourselves wondering if God even cares. And yet the psalmist says, yes. Yes, God cares. Every death is a costly loss to God who created you and I and this entire world to be in eternal relationship with him. And so the psalmist asks another question. Knowing what God has done, how God has saved me, rescued my feet, and brought me to the land of the living, what can I give back to God for all of the good things I have been blessed with? And yet, like us, he knows it is an unanswerable question. We have nothing that we can give back to God that could ever equal the gift of life that God has given us or the gift of grace and forgiveness. And yet, with the recognition of God's care and protection and love, our very souls often cry out and demand that we respond in some way. And our soul's response to God's gracious and generous, unmatched gift of life and love is worship. When the psalmist declares that they will raise up the cup of salvation and keep their promises, they are declaring that they will worship God. Because worship is so much more than our Sunday service. It is a way of life that centers on God that recognizes our proximity to both life and death, and that it is only solely through God's grace that we wake up each day. And when we face our own mortality, when we hand over the false ideas that we control even a second of our life back to God where it belongs, worship becomes as easy and as natural as breathing. You know, I've spent a lot of my life in the valley of the shadow of death. When I was in seventh grade, we lost 
my grandmother and my great-grandfather and my stepfather to cancer, cancer and ALS respectively in six months. Since that time, I have lost all but one grandparent, many friends, an uncle. I've worked in a hospital where my nickname became the angel of death for the number of people who died in my unit as a chaplain. I have pastored congregation through a fire that destroyed the homes of 60 members and broke a community. And now, through a global pandemic, I sit with you. I've sat through the death of a marriage and the death of plans and dreams for myself and for countless others. And people often ask me, after all of the death and all of the pain that I have seen, how I can worship God. And my response is always the same. How can I not? Because for all of the death and pain that I have seen, it is only a small, small part of all of the life and all of the grace and all of the beauty that I have seen. Much of it in the midst of death. And I am confident that when I, that when we stand before the Lord and we see the story of our life play back for us, what we will see are all the times that we missed the protection of God. All the times when God helped our lives to flourish and find peace that we overlooked. And how could I not worship a God who weeps at the pain of death? that all things bring into our midst. The God who upon seeing the devastation that death brings upon his people, his rebellious and even at times evil people, took it upon himself to die and defeat death and bring back the promise of true life to those who had been made out of dust and were entirely unworthy. In the Psalms, I have found a place to wrestle out this tension that I have in life about the way things are supposed to be and death and the way things are. And I have found kinship with the writers of these Psalms who can both cry out to God in anger and sorrow in one breath and then praise him with joy and thankfulness in the next. And it is my hope that over the last seven weeks, you too have found the Psalms to be a place where you can cry out, me too. A place where you can feel understood and comforted and not alone and maybe even a little inspired. And so as we reach the end of our series and we stare down an uncertain path path as we stand in a space where both life and death are tangible and always waiting in the wings. I hope that we continue to worship our God with cries for mercy, knowing that he is listening closely. I have always been struck by the doxology and so I offer it to you today as a closure on our series on Psalms. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. 
Friends, as we come into our time of offering, I just want to offer my own thanks to each and every one of you. It has been a long six months that we have been out of the building and you have continued to be faithful. You know, we cannot do the ministry here at Seattle Community Church without you. It is through your generous ties and offerings that we are able to serve our community and continue to worship with one another. And so now in this time, we invite you to either go on our website and click on the give page and find a way to give there, send in a check. You can swing by and drop something off with us. We're here during the week. But please continue to give faithfully as we serve God in the midst of pandemic and in the midst of Seattle. Thank you for that message. Church, let's sing the song together. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my too till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my too. called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name I ran out of that grave out of Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old man knew Jesus when I met you called my name I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glory I need a rescue My sin was heavy The chains break At the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan And you called me A citizen of heaven When I was broke Now a blessing from our elder. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray. May the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all throughout this week, 
Amen.